So we, we left Sisu and we dressed for the embassy, but <laughs> we Let's didn't dress really for the rain. Look at the rain clouds. And we are on our way to the to the visa office. <laughs> this is a crazy day today. Yeah, so we had to come with Tipex a long way, and then we also had to illegal, illegal docking with her. Yeah, we did illegal docking. Break out of the pontoon. <laughs> this is Captain Frick and his first mate Pietro. We decided to chuck everything, leave the rat race and just embark on a new adventure. And that is our new home, Sisu. <laughs> what a day. We started off very hopeful. We're going to achieve lots, actually a very big thing today. We're going to apply for our multiple entry Schengen visa to go to the Greek islands. And then we tied up at the dock and I wanted to show, uh, this is the pegs, we're here. And it was pretty a tough ride coming, going down we to the dock. And I discovered that the GoPro battery <laughs> is dead for some reason. I mean, we always charge, there's a big charging station and we charge most of the stuff. So this whole episode is going to be basically me and her talking and discussing, not really a whole episode, but this part of the episode is going to be talking. <laughs> to find this place, I mean Google Maps is brilliant, they even have this, what do you call this, virtual thing that you can virtual see? Virtual reality, no, 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 augmented reality. Augment yeah, so, <laughs> it was a problem, <laughs> even that was a problem. So we, we eventually found this place and we walk in there and the water is just dripping from us and and we ask, where's the visa application base? And a little small office, very, very small office. And there's only one chair. It's like... <laughs> so I've got it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm in there and I'm wet. And everything is like dripping off me. And I just want to get rid of this, this wet jacket. The because office is so small, he had to put his jacket outside the office on the floor. <laughs> there wasn't even space inside the office. <laughs> yeah, well, it was very, very, very small. And then this girl, she insisted yeah, it, it was all good and fine, and then she said, okay, Pietro, this is you, I need your passport, and I need the application, which we do have, we have everything, like, in order, the whole yeah. thing, shoot. And then she wanted our, our ID Original cards, ID our Turkish cards. ID cards, which we didn't have. And we just um, made an application for the residence permit, and I sent it to the marina, but yeah, not, to not to this, this marina. marina. They send it to the marina where we had our yeah. home address, which is Finnegan. Finnegan. And so right there, poof, everything stopped. Everything stopped. The whole effort of getting there, which took about two hours. No, it just stopped. Just there. Bang. Okay, problem one was our residence cards, uh, which we did not have the originals with us yet. It was sent to Finnegan Marina and we were in Mar well, yeah, we were in Marmaris and we only had the email copy of it. Now the residence card, just to explain quickly the background there, is um, normally you apply for any visa in the country where your passport is, is issued. Okay, we were not going to go back to South Africa to do that and because we were told if we come to Finica or to Turkey and we sign a year contract with the Sudur group, then we can apply for temporary residence in Turkey and that will enable us then to apply for our visas which we duly did and that exercise was painless. Barbaros from the office here in Finicky is just amazing. He had everything organized for us, arranged the paperwork for us and it was a, like a two hour painless effort. That was just a breeze. So problem number one was the original cards. So Barbaros just couriered the cards for us across to Marmaris and um, we had the originals. But then when we phoned to reschedule the appointment, the Marmaris offices, the VFS Global Agency, has already closed for the season. Now we're talking about November, so everything closes November, December, January, February. So um, 
yeah, they've already closed for the season. So the next closest town that we could go to was Bordrum. So the next trip off to Bordrum. We tied up Sisu and we are ready to go for a very important appointment. Visa time. This is take two. <laughs> the last time we didn't have our original Turkish ID cards with us. So we had to reschedule and today is the day. So all thumbs and big toes crossed. So we are on our way to Bodrum. The weather window just didn't want to work out for us to find a good sailing thing to go to Bodrum. And that's why we're in a car. But we're also going to use the same opportunity to find some good places along the route. We arrived in Bordeaux uh, with a little rental. We had a perfect drive here. The roads are awesome and easy to follow and everything. So it was cool. And getting here, we decided we've got time to kill. We got here in time looking for a place to have lunch and geez every single second place is closed for winter so we finally found a place right at the beach so we spotted our future anchor spot when we come back here again there is Anne we're on our way back again <laughs> a bit of an unsuccessful the guys were asking us all sorts of documents that, that we just didn't think they will ask because it's not the normal visa procedure. So then they started asking me for my skipper's license, the original, they don't want copies, uh, they also don't accept emails. And then I wanted to see the original contract that we had with the marina. And then they start saying that we need to be six months already in the country before we can apply. So it's almost like they just throw one block after another block so that we cannot get the visa. Or I don't know what is going on. But now we need to email the embassy and ask them if we can apply in Turkey for Schengen. So that is now step number one. And then we need to get our ROI skippers, which we have. We need to get our original contract, which we will now get. And then I also ask us for an lease exit entry entry exit form. It's not your normal ship block because we have the ship block there and we have the original ship block. But I want an entry exit form from the police. <laughs> Whatever that means, I don't know. Uh, but we will need to go get that now. Lots of paper trails. Okay, second trip was Bodrum. We had the pink card, so that we, we thought, ah, this is it, we're going to get it now. So, um, a long list of stuff. First of all, they wanted the original, Frick's original skipper's license and my original license, which we obviously didn't have with us, and they accept no email. So, we couldn't scan an email it off to them. And then they also said we have to be in Turkey for at least six months before we can apply. And at that stage we were here for a month. So we have to contact the, the Greece embassy and ask them if we are allowed or if we may apply in Turkey. Which we duly did. We actually phoned them and the woman said no it's all fine. Go ahead you can apply. There's absolutely no problem. And then the other one that they want is a police clearance. It's an entry into and exit out of the country. So it's not just the ship's log. It's basically a, a printout that they send you all the times that you've been in Turkey, even when we came three, four years ago and all the other trips. So they have a whole log of every time you entered Turkey and every time you exited Turkey. So they wanted that as well. So back to the drawing board. And they wanted a the original contract that we have with us to do in Marina. The original. Everything has to be original. So We'll go and collect that as well. We are on our way again for the third time to try and do the Schengen visa application. I 
did they say? Third time lucky. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So we're very positive. We will be lucky. So we wake up pretty early this morning, but st <laughs> still took us a long time to get all the stuff printed and all the documents ready and stuff like that. And the problem is, these guys don't know what to do when you live on a boat and use a boat as a transport. Because they want to see flight tickets and they want to see booked hotel reservations and paid for. <laughs> and we don't have that. show that we are residents in Turkey. But because we got the card <laughs> proving we have got a residence in Risa. They also England wanted a contract, right? A marina contract. Like, who wants a marina contract if you want to have a Schengen? It's like, I don't know how these guys work, but anyway. Uh, that was not mentioned in any of the previous three attempts. Three attempts. Oh, four attempts. Uh, two attempts. This is the third attempt, right? Now it was mentioned. So I'm sure on the fourth attempt we will have another hurdle that we need to go through, yeah, which we cannot like do immediately. There's something else no. every single time that they need. And we ask this time specifically, is there anything else that you still need? No, 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 only this. This is also... Okay, take three at an attempt. So off we went by bus to Antalya, because boredom at this stage couldn't take any more appointments when they were also closing up for the season. So we hop on the bus, full of oomph and positiveness. Today is going to be successful because Antalya, after all, is a big city. And when we got to the offices, they were clued up and jacked up. And we thought, this is it. We're going to do it. And went through all the paperwork and then proof of residence. They wanted proof of residence. So we thought that the PIN card was proof of residence because we needed proof of residence before they issued the PIN card. I said, no, sorry, we need to go to the immigration office and it has to be a wet stamp. So in other words, it's original with a stamp on to say we are residents of the marina. So there was an immigration office in Antalya. So quickly got onto the taxis, drove to the other side of Antalya, stood in queues for hours. And when we got to the front, the guy was very rude and he said, sorry, can't help you. You have to go back to Khmer. That is the, the little town where the pin card was originally issued. Can't you just press the print button because everything is on the system? Nope, not prepared to help us. We have to go to Khmer. We are in Turkey, so it's we are not... We are now resident, but you have to be a resident of the country where you apply for the Schengen visa. So the first thing we had to do is we had to get this card. So we are now Turkish residents. And we thought this was the key to everything. Okay, so let's go let's through the documents <laughs> and then make sure that we've got everything here. Obviously, first of all, valid passport. Passport that we do have. Tick. Yeah, and it has to be valid for the next six months and then there should be open tick, spaces. Tick, tick, so tick, tick, tick. That so is all done. that's all good. This is a tick list that you need to have all the documents, but it's in Turkish. 14 items that you need. It's 14 items, but there's also a thing to say you need to have a flight ticket, you need to have a, a hotel, hotel booking, booking, which is all paid for, and the date of entry and the date of return need to be the exact same dates as you put on your application forms. So this that didn't help us much because the moment we say uh, we don't have a flight ticket, they want to chase us away. We say no, no, we're going to go with our boats. Like, hmm. <laughs> oops. <laughs> so this form, it is there. That's a tick list. Yeah. It's a tick list. It's in Turkish. So I hope your Turkish is good. Ours are not. And then it's the application form. Then you need the application form. Make sure the dates is the application date is correct and your entry and exit date is also correct. Okay, that is it. I've got it. 
copy of your passport. Then a copy of your passport. Then a copy of all your previous previous visas. And <laughs> I do have a lot of Schengen visas. So it's not that I did not enter the country before. Ooh. I I do have a lot of Schengen and I like oh nice to see you again sir but okay that is now like that and then a copy of the I call it the pink card yeah and the they difference. stamp it to say they actually saw the original and this is where our first problem occurred mm. we had this but we didn't have this yet this, in our hands yeah this was in Faniki Marina and we were at that stage in Marmaris Marina so we had to ask Marmaris to uh, Finicky to send it to Marmaris and, Mar and when we got to Marmaris they no more bookings no more they bookings <laughs> so they closed <laughs> okay so yeah. we went with this we thought now okay now we have the original document everything is good we went to Bodrum mm. okay so and we do have our visa applications we do have the, the, the entries from the immigration office here that didn't count. You need to have your little record. But you need this too. <laughs> and then our medical aid that we had to take out. But they want to keep this the original. So we don't even have a copy for ourselves. So we need to go back to the officers that issued the medical aid. To supply us with another copy of, copy of originals. Now what will happen if, if we exactly. have an accident? So they said they, they take this. So they're going to take our originals, proof that we have insurance. They're going to so it. make sure you do have a copy and then all about boat lock. So we've got a boat lock uh, for the boat that needs to go in crew. and out, which says we are crew on Sisu. And it's oh, stamped by the immigration. There's a lot of, and for all of this, you need to have the original so that they can stamp these ones to say, oh, "We saw the original." We saw them. And then our skipper's licenses. Yeah. So in boardroom, I had this. And not that. And Pietro had that. I had this, but they yeah. wanted original. So I had to get my original. Yes, your original. And the original. That is a different story. <laughs> we can we maybe need to make a new episode. Okay. But yes, my Riyad Master offshore skipper's license. But this one got lost in the post, and I only had this one, the copy. So I thought I have a copy. It is good. No, they wanted to see the original. So you, you need to have the originals of all the documents they want. So I had to jump through some hoops. Got it back from the UK, so I've got now this. Good. Okay, now but boardroom <laughs> was a mess. Boat and papers. then all the boat papers. And for everyone, you need also to have the original. That's our registration papers. This is the Board authority that we, that we can sail the boat. So you need to have a, a form as well to say you are allowed to sail a boat, even if it is your boat. <laughs> it's like... Copy of insurance. Then uh, insurance. And then we've got the ship logs of the boat, of the previous ship logs, to show them what we've done so far in Turkey. So that is there. And then, bank statements. And then the bank statements, the last three months, they need to have bank statements. And they do have a question about us not having a Turkish bank account. So let's hope that one. Yeah. And then you need the letter of the motivation. A motivation letter from the boat skipper, who is now me, <laughs> with all your details of both, the, in our case, both the crew members, but if you have more crew members, all of them need to be listed there. All the information that is on this little red card and in your passports need to be on here. Your boat registration papers need to be on here. Your first date of enter and exit need to be here as well. Yeah. And what else? And then the duration, how long you want to, because it's a boat. And, and you, you try to tell him, um, yeah, even though that we say we were going to be there on this specific date, if there's a storm at sea, we will not go. Might not, yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, hmm, but you have to go on this date. It's like, eh. so it's tricky. With a boat, it's tricky. And then the other thing that we needed the last time that we went 
was the entry exit. Yeah, so you from need the police. You need yeah from the immigration police. You need yeah. the entry and exit forms. And that's your history basically with Turkey to show that you've been in Turkey and you exited and you didn't have any fines and any other things and you're not a criminal here and lots of stuff. Now, another and thing. Another thing that we still need to get to. Yeah, so we went Khmer. on a yeah. four, third time. We went to Antalya. Antalya this time. We thought it was Antalya is like a big city and they should be clued up and they should know everything. And that's why we were optimistic that last time was going to be the third time lucky, which it didn't turn out. So we needed our address. Confirmation <laughs> of address. This little red card actually didn't means work. nothing. I want to see it and all it, but I am now a Turkish resident and this one actually say I do have a legal address here in. And the address is actually this marina. No, 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 no. Not they either. want to have an address stamped by the immigration office, which Antalya did have immigration office, but that immigration office just said, no, you cannot do it here. You have to go where your card was issued. Like <laughs> which is <laughs> around the corner from here. Yeah, it is hours from Antalya. So make sure that you don't believe this is the Alpha and Omega. You need also yeah, an address that is stamped and signed by the immigration office. We thought we were legit Turks <laughs> yeah. with these cards. And with this, we are residents. Apparently not. And they need proof of residence when they issue the card. So now you need another proof of residence. To prove that the card is that valid. The is right. <laughs> <laughs> so we checked the map and it seems like our internet is again on our phone is giving problems. <laughs> So we had to get also offline maps and we got the routes, the routes, no? yeah. the routes to a city called Kemer, where we need to find our address and it is stamped. So this is the fourth trip to our Schengen visas. We arrived <laughs> to get our proof of residence letter. So let's go fetch it. Another thing that we didn't have the last time was our original contract with Sutur Marinas that we printed out this morning. So hopefully we're going to collect our last document now and then we set. You will not believe this. No more words. <laughs> we failed to get an address because someone else already used the address. Now, that person need to be looked at or he need to say, give the permission to cancel the address or the manager of the marina needs to cancel that guy's address. So it seems like not only one person can live at the marina. Because it's a business address, they say. You know, Marina, in my mind, has like, I think that Marina <laughs> has like 50 boats, maybe 150 per boats. But 50 of them permanently living there. Yeah, and, and yeah, and, and, and their addresses, I, I just don't get it. So, yeah, we failed the fourth time, so maybe the fifth time. <laughs> Come here, um, where our residence cards were issued, we went there and... Um, there was somebody else already on the popular uh, on the, on the address, and we said, "Well, that is obvious because it is a marina. <laughs> there is lots of boats here, lots of people, and lots of people needing that address because there's a lot of temporary residents here that obviously also have their residence cards, and they also use the address." No, nope, doesn't work that way. We have to now get hold of that person that's on the list already on the address, and he has to give permission that he's gonna, he can be taken off and we can be put on the list. Found the marina, they don't even know who the person is. He was obviously a couple of years back, he was probably moored yeah, and he obviously needed it also for probably the same reason we do. So there's no ways of getting hold of a person like that. So 
The marina office under uh, the manager undertook to get hold of the population register people and um, so the process would be to get that car off the population register and put us on the population register and then once we're on the population register the immigration office can issue us a proof of residence <laughs> of uh, address so yeah so that is the procedure they had to go through so we had to wait for that so we are now proudly on the population register of Fenike, Turkey. <laughs> so we had a little bit of a hiccup on the fourth time of our address. It was double booked. Uh, they just added us now to that address and hopefully we will be successful. So let's go try for the fifth time. Fifth time lucky. Smiles. <laughs> 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 Put it this way, they didn't send us packing to go and get more documents. They uh, took our Yeah, yeah, they accepted the application, but we had to write those long letters. And and I say we need to have a motivation letter, but we have a motivation letter. Long but now they want one. a summary and, uh, and they don't understand. I need, it sounds like they want to get us only there for the first three months and only for three months. Yeah. And we cannot even get out of the mat in three months. But let's see what's happening. And we also don't have a Turkish bank account. So we had to write a letter to say we don't have a Turkish bank account. And we accept it. I don't know. We, we've, we've heard VFS Global telling us that we should need a Turkish bank account. We have to acknowledge that. So it might be a problem. <laughs> Back to Antalya with our that we are now on a population register. We've got the proof of residence with a wet stamp on and everything. So back to Antalya for the last time. Or so we thought. But anyway, this trip around they we thought ah they accepted the application or they took it in, they took our passports, but we had to re well every time you go you have to fill in your application again because it has to be the date on the application has to be the date that you are there and in the meantime now we're back we're in february already of this year so um on the first of february they changed a couple of laws on the schengen visas where they make it easier for you to get uh, longer schengen visas with multiple entries so it was a new form to be completed so we had to f complete a new form Oh, another thing that they picked up, we had the motivational letter, a printed one nice with Sisu logo on it and the whole kadoo, it's very professional with all our details on it and the whole, all the who's, why, what's is on there. No, that is not acceptable, we have to have a handwritten one. So basically we sat in the office and copied what we had on the printed one onto just a blank piece of paper but it has to be in handwriting. So we had to complete a new application form, we had to handwrite a, a new motivational thing and then we also had to write a declaration, kind of a declaration kind of thing where we admit that VFS Global advised us that there, sh there could be a problem because we don't have Turkish bank accounts, so, which we duly did. Okay, so we did that letter as well and we left and we're holding thumbs for at least a five year because a multiple entry Schengen visa, so very positive. We thought this is it. So this is our fifth time, We're actually sixth. sixth time already, sixth but the uh, fifth time at one of these offices, the sixth time or one In of the total. accounts was actually a uh, mishap with the municipality immigration office that just didn't want to print us our address. So let's go in and see, There's hopefully, oh, it seems Shit. like they are closed. sounds like it went well but we have to pay again and the other thing was that we we had to fill in all application forms over again because it's new Schengen forms and this time we had to fill it in by hand and now I need to find a bank because we need to pay again and I need to find a bank that can speak English to me and also give me euros the passports it's not it's not lines, it's also not a fridge kit, it's very 
open and, and it feels like passports. Okay, now we need to open it quickly to find out what are we getting. We are hoping for a five year multiple entry into Schengen. Greek visa. Okay, and dates, dates, dates. I'm trying to, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> well, it's a multiple entry. And it's valid from the 10th of March 2020 to the 10th of May 2020. <gasps> Just for three months. So we will need to go again. Six. They got a phone call at the marina office because they couldn't get hold of us. We don't know why. But. Um, they spoke to the marina office and they explained to us we've got another problem. I thought, oh man, can this really be serious? Our medical aid is, does not include Schengen countries. So we had to go to the medical aid company. They had to put an endorsement on our medical aid. We had to pay in extra money for it um, to add all the Schengen countries. So again, back to Antalya we went again to give them, the, uh, and another thing, the original medical aid form. So that was the last trip that we did. We handed in the medical aid and everybody is happy. Thank goodness it wasn't all the paperwork again. So they just added that to our application and sent it off. And then the good news came, our Schengen's was approved, but only for three months. And then what happened? COVID-19 happened. And we're still in COVID-19 and our Schengen's again is running out. So <laughs> how much bad luck can people have with the Schengen visa? So now we went back onto the, the internet to try and reschedule for whenever everything lifts so we can start applying again. And then, thank goodness, there was a big notice on their website to say if you were issued a Schengen visa in the COVID-19 time frame you can just merely email the company with copies of your visas and ask for it to be extended and just give them your new flight plans and intentions of where what so that is the process that we are currently busy with so let's see what's gonna happen now